Shalom everyone, Bob Mendelson here. I've been enjoying the series on the Book of Romans. I hope you have as well. And I know that chapters 9, 10, and 11 are coming up. And so I suggested to Darren that perhaps a Jewish point of view might be something that would be worthwhile. You see, the, the Apostle Paul has been teaching the church in his letter to the Romans about God's sovereignty and about God's choices so that the believers can be comforted when challenged by their own lack, by their own insufficiency, their own sinfulness. The whole point is comfort and encouragement. In light of all that, the apostle, well, turns his attention to the, the obvious question. Well, if all that is true, then what, ab what about the Jewish people? After all, if God chooses the believers and we've got nothing to worry about, what about the Jewish people who were also chosen by God? Are they still in God's consideration and does he even notice them? And what about the Jewish people who don't believe in anything at all? What, what's God's plan for them? So Paul deals with the problem of Israel from two different standpoints. In chapter 9, he teaches the sovereignty of God, how God chose my people for himself back then in the days of Abraham. In chapter 10, he deals with Israel's failure to respond to God's righteousness, ending with the announcement in chapter 10 that we are a disobedient and obstinate people. Ouch. Well, if this is so, then how does Paul resolve the obvious tension? Will Israel's disobedience win in the battle with God, or will God find a way to deal with the situation so as to safeguard his purpose? That's where chapter 11 comes in. And Paul will answer this by looking into Israel's past, present, and future. So chapter 11 begins with Paul calling some witnesses. First, he calls himself to the witness stand. He says, if God's done with the Jewish people, then he's done with me. But I'm a believer, so no, God did not reject his Jewish people. The apostolic answer is no. Then he calls Elijah and the 7,000 who stayed faithful at the time of Elijah. In the same way, God has preserved from within Israel a remnant, that's a key word, a remnant who loved Jesus. Some get that mixed up and think that the term remnant applies to the church, that is the church of Jesus has replaced the Jewish people. That's exactly not what the apostle is saying. And we'll talk more about that another time, maybe over morning tea when I'm with you. Then this remnant in verses 5 to 10 of chapter 11, since most Jewish people are rejectors of the Messiah, have we fallen too far? Did their rejection of the Messiahship of Jesus cause them to fall irreparably? Absolutely not, he shouts. He quotes from two biblical passages, Isaiah 44 and Psalm 69, about this smear that's over our eyes so that most Jewish people then, and dare I say today, continue in unbelief is actually a testimony of God to choose a remnant. Then Gentiles get in on it in chapter 11 from verse 11 on, and then that Gentile ministry continues. So each of you who's a Gentile for Jesus, <laughs> you've got a job to do, and that's to make Jewish people jealous. Don't be conceited, but fear, he says. And then it'll be Jewish fullness time again. That's the joy of my work. And that's what I wanted to say as I look at the big picture of Romans 9, 10, and 11. Hopefully that'll help. And as we keep unpacking it with more and more detail, I think you'll see God's kindness to you and his kindness to the Jewish people. He is a faithful God. Shalom.